Welcome to my first mock draft of the NFL mock draft season. And I am super excited to get going with my first mock draft. I know I'm starting a little bit earlier than what I usually do. I usually wait until the season's over. But there's been so much that's gone on in January that I think it's best to start a mock draft right now. And my goal here is to do at least one mock draft at least once a week. Now, maybe this will be the only mock draft I do until the end of the Super Bowl, but I'm probably going to at least maybe do one more. If I were to do one more before the Super Bowl was complete, I'd probably do it maybe next week while there's really nothing to talk about in the NFL because there's no Pro Bowl this year like anybody's going to watch that anyway. But without further ado, let me get to my first mock draft of the year. And the first pick goes to the Jaguars, and I already have them taking their pick here, and that is Trevor Lawrence, the quarterback out of Clemson. No doubt in my mind that's going to be the pick. The Jaguars get their franchise quarterback. And the next pick goes to the New York Jets. Now, the Jets are in a very interesting dilemma here. Do they take Penny Sewell out of Oregon to build up their offensive line? Well, that does beg the question, what will the Jets do at quarterback for 2021? Do they stick with Sam Darnold as QB1, or does new head coach Robert Sala take a quarterback of his own? Because keep in mind, the new Jets offensive coordinator was also the passing coordinator for the San Francisco 49ers. And with that in mind, I have them going with a quarterback. But the question is, which quarterback? Is it Zach Wilson at BYU or Justin Fields at Ohio State? And I have them going with Zach Wilson, the quarterback out of BYU. Next, we have the Dolphins. And the Dolphins, another team with a very interesting dilemma here. Do they take an offensive lineman to have protection to a tug of Iloa? Or are the Dolphins going to make a blockbuster trade in this offseason? Because the Dolphins, they are a team that potentially could acquire Deshaun Watson. Or do they go with a wide receiver to get a number one go-to receiver for quarterback to a tug of Iloa? But with keeping in mind here with Tua Tagovailoa, and he hasn't gotten a full season to really prove himself. So to make Tua Tagovailoa a better quarterback, it's best to take a wide receiver from Alabama. And I'm going to go with Heisman Trophy winner Devontae Smith. I just think with Devontae Smith, with Tua Tagovailoa, bring back that chemistry. I think you make Tua a better quarterback. Now at number four, we have the Atlanta Falcons. Now, the Atlanta Falcons hired Arthur Smith as a new head coach. Typically, first-time head coaches, well, first-year head coaches, they want a quarterback of their own. However, I think Arthur Smith is different because Arthur Smith came from the Tennessee Titans. He was their offensive coordinator. And he turned Ryan Tannehill's career around. So with that in mind, I think that Arthur Smith is going to accept the challenge of turning around Matt Ryan's career. Because Matt Ryan's best season was with Kyle Shanahan as the offensive coordinator. So I am going to pass on a quarterback, and they are going to draft something that they need desperately. And this is kind of bold here. But Patrick Sertain out of Alabama. I know the Falcons drafted A.J. Terrell last in the first round, but Patrick Sertain, I think it's too tempting to pass up on someone like him. Best corner in this draft. The Falcons need help in their secondary. Their entire defense, there's a bunch of holes in it. And at least drafting Sertain, I think it fills at least one of them. Next, we have the Cincinnati Bengals with the fifth overall pick. And this one, you could honestly flip a coin on this one. Is it going to be Penny Sewell out of Oregon? Or is it going to be Jamar Chase, the wide receiver out of LSU? Here's what I think. The Dolphins in this mock draft that I have took Devontae Smith to give to a tell some chemistry. 
to make a better quarterback. I think the Bengals go the same route and draft Jamar Chase out of LSU. Now, the one thing that is concerning, Jamar Chase, he didn't play in 2020, but I think I think this is kind of a high-risk, high-reward type of pick because I think Jamar Chase is either going to be one of the best receivers in the league within these next four years, or he's going to be a complete bust. I don't think there's an in-between. I don't think he's going to be an average receiver. I think he'll be one of the top 10 receivers in this league within the next four years or a complete bust. I think Jamar Chase, I think that is a hit or miss. But I know some people out there, some draft experts, I've seen some mock drafts. I've seen some posts on social media that Jamar Chase is kind of concerning. I think the Bengals go with Jamar Chase to give Joe Burrow one of his receivers from LSU, his best receiver, who I think at least, because Jamar Chase won the Blimpikoff Award in 2019. Next, we have the Eagles. And the Eagles, they have quite a bit of needs. Their top three needs, wide receiver, cornerback, and a linebacker. I also think they need offensive line help as well. Carson Wentz was sacked 50 times in 2020. And I think Carson Wentz, I think he's just fine. I know a lot of people like to doubt Carson Wentz, but I think he has the potential to be a great quarterback. But I just think he's being let down in two areas. In the offensive line, because his offensive line just can't seem to stay healthy. And they don't have a go-to wide receiver. They don't have a top target for Carson Wentz. Well, this is kind of where it gets complicated. The Eagles' defense is also not that well. Their pass defense is atrocious. Their corners are getting burned every single week. But Patrick Sertain is already taken, which is why I have them boosting up their offensive line and going with Penny Sewell out of Oregon. And pick number seven, this is where the draft is going to get very exciting here, the Detroit Lions. It was announced today that the Lions and Matthew Stafford are expected to part ways at some point in this offseason, whether if it's through a trade or if it is just the Lions just releasing him. I'm not quite sure if the Lions are going to find a trade partner that's going to be willing to take Matthew Stafford. Because Matthew Stafford has had his fair share of injuries throughout his career so far, and he is in those early 30s, kind of the years where most quarterbacks, they start to deteriorate. So I think the Lions are going to start fresh and go with Justin Fields, the quarterback out of Ohio State. And next we have the Panthers. I think the Panthers, they go with something that they probably should have done last year, but I think that Derek White, I think he was still worth it, but they addressed their help at the linebacker position that they didn't last year by passing up on Isaiah Simmons, and they take Micah Parsons, the linebacker at Penn State. Next, we have the Denver Broncos. The Broncos, kind of an interesting selection here, but I have been going with Caleb Farley, the cornerback out of Virginia Tech. I just think the Broncos are going to get help within the secondary. I think Caleb Farley may be a reach here, but I think it's high risk, high reward for the Broncos. The 10th overall pick belongs to the Dallas Cowboys. And I have them going with offensive tackle Samuel Cosme out of Texas. I just think the Cowboys, they just build up on that offensive line. Because remember, the Cowboys, when they go offensive line the first round, those offensive linemen, they turn out. When you combine them together, in the long run, it can be back to that one of those best offensive lines in the NFL. So I think cost me with the 10th pick of the Cowboys. Now next is the Giants. And the Giants, well, they address their biggest need, and that is in the edge rush. And they go with Quiddy Pay out of Michigan. I think Pay could end up sneaking to the top 10, 
Why did the Giants grab him at 11? Next, we have the 49ers. And the 49ers, they are potentially a team that are in the running to get Matthew Stafford. But I think they pass on Matthew Stafford. I just think you can't deny what Jimmy Garoppolo did in 2019. Although you can argue and say that the running game led by Raheem Moster, he led the 49ers to that Super Bowl appearance by being the Packers convincingly in last year's NFC Championship game. But still, Jimmy Garoppolo had a pretty good year in 2019. So I am going to go with them drafting J.C. Horn out of South Carolina. They address the best player available amongst their needs, and that is J.C. Horn to help with their secondary. Next, we have the Los Angeles Chargers, and I think that this is a pick that are is going to be the best player available here. Amongst their needs, their biggest need is an offensive tackle. But just in case they can't re-sign Hunter Henry in free agency, I have them going with Kyle Pitts, the tight end out of Florida. If they are able to re-sign Hunter Henry in the offseason, then I think they're going to definitely go with either Rashawn Slater out of Northwestern or Christian Darsaw out of Virginia Tech. They'll take an offensive lineman if they were able to re-sign Hunter Henry. But if not, I think they're going to be tempted to go with Kyle Pitts, the best tight end in this draft class. And I think it just adds another weapon to give Justin Herbert. Next, we have the Minnesota Vikings. And I have the Vikings going with one of these offensive tackles here. I have him going with the Sean Slater out of Northwestern. I just think you got to build protect for Kirk Cousins here. I think it will be worth it. I know an offensive lineman or an offensive tackle isn't really the best pick, but I think it's worth it for the Vikings. Next, we have the Patriots, and Kyle Pitts is unfortunately taken, which Kyle Pitts would be the pick at 15, but the Chargers got him in this mock draft. So I have him going with the best player available at this time, and that is Jalen Waddell out of Alabama. I think the pick could be Trey Lance, but I think it depends on what happens within the beginning portion of free agency because the Patriots, they could be in line for Matthew Stafford. They could trade for Carson Wentz. I think the possibilities could be endless at quarterback for the Patriots. So next we have the Arizona Cardinals. The Arizona Cardinals were just short of making the playoffs this past season. And this may be a controversial pick, but I have them going with Najee Harris, their running back out of Alabama. Now, running backs, they typically aren't drafted in the first round. I think it's getting very rare these days where we see running backs get drafted in the first round. But I think Najee Harris, I think he's the best running back in this draft class. I know you have Travis Etienne, but I think Najee Harris, I think he's a lot better. I think Najee Harris is this year's Derrick Henry. And Derrick Henry fell in the second round when he was drafted. And we also recently saw Josh Jacobs, an Alabama running back, get drafted in the first round by the Raiders. And he's doing quite well so far. So I think the Cardinals, I think they do the same here. Take Najee Harris at running back. Although... Maybe they can address help with the offensive line, which they haven't done the last two drafts. Maybe go with Derisaw. But I think Najee Harris, I still think that's a pretty good pick for the Cardinals. Really help out that running game. And Harris, he really can take the pressure off Kyler Murray. So next we have the Raiders. And I think the Raiders, I think they just address the best player available at this time, at least to me and go with Joseph Asai out of Texas. It just helps out the Raiders' defense. The Raiders fired their defensive coordinator in the middle of 2020, so they need to improve on defense. And I think Joseph Asai, I think he can be a steal in this draft. 
So next we have the Miami Dolphins, the 18th pick. The third overall pick, they took Devontae Smith. That was the Texans pick. Let's see here. I'm going, I think the Dolphins. I think they'll go with Travis Etienne here. I think the Dolphins address their need at the running back position. I think the Dolphins, they need a running back that can be a day one starter. I think Travis Etienne fits that bill for them. So next we have the Washington football team. And the Washington football team, well, I'm just going to go in this current scenario that the Washington football team, they're not going to acquire a quarterback through free agency or through any trades. So I have them drafting one. And since Trey Lance is falling off the board here, I think the Washington football team will go with Trey Lance in this situation. I just think that Trey Lance, you don't want, and you're a team like the Washington football team, where you don't really have a commitment to QB1 going into next season. I think it's best to just draft one while Trey Lance is falling off the board because Trey Lance, many say that he is a top 10 or even top five pick. So I think the Wash football team, they address their need at quarterback because it's unknown who the quarterback will be. They do want Alex Smith on the roster, but they're not fully committed to him being QB1. So next we have the Bears. The Bears, do they draft a quarterback? Do they draft a Mac Jones or a Kyle Trask and replace a struggling Mitchell Trubisky? I think no. I think the Bears are going to wait until at least the second round or even next year. And they address needs with the offensive line. And they will go with Christian Derrissa out of Virginia Tech. I just think this is a smart pick for the Bears. And especially when David Montgomery had the season that he had. And if David Montgomery had a better offensive line, I think he can be a top seven running back in the league. And he really stepped up in the absence of Tariq Cohen last season, this past season. So look out for the Bears if they draft smart. So next we have the Colts. And the Colts, are they in prime position for Matthew Stafford? Some say the Colts are, but others, maybe not. So I have the Colts ad addressing a need at the wide receiver position because the Colts, they need to find a replacement for T.Y. Hilton because T.Y. Hilton has been disappointing in these last two seasons. And I have been going with Terrence Marshall Jr. out of LSU. Now, the Colts, they do appear to be a quarterback away from being a legitimate contender. But I just think that it's kind of too early to go with a quarterback at this point. When you have the quarterbacks, the main quarterbacks that are in the discussion for the top quarterbacks in this draft class already off the board. I think it's best to just wait until round two, see if Mac Jones is still there, see if Kyle Trask is still there. But moving on to the Titans, and they pick up the best player available amongst their needs, and that is Gregory Rosu, the edge rusher out of Miami. Now, the Titans, they have the least amount of sacks this season out of any team that has ever made the playoffs. And the Titans, they need an edge rusher if they want to contend year in, year out. Because the Titans, they have had two good seasons back-to-back. -back, and Derrick Henry has done really well. And Ryan Tannehill's career has really been reborn. But I just think the Titans need help with their defense. So the Jets are up. Now, this is the Seahawks' first-round pick from the Jamal Adams trade. And if you look at their team needs, their biggest needs are a wide receiver and a corner. But I think with them drafting Zach Wilson or drafting a quarterback in the second round, excuse me, second overall pick, if they were to draft 
a QB second overall, I would imagine they want to have a go to receiver. And that is Rashad, Rashad Bateman out of Minnesota. Now, Bateman, absolute monster. I think he can be the Justin Jefferson of this draft class. Possibly the rookie of the year. He'll obviously be the number one target for the Jets. So I think Bateman, I think this is a I think this is a steal here for the Jets. Now, next we have the Steelers. And the Steelers, I just think they draft they address needs within the offensive line. And they go with Alex Leatherwood, the offensive tackle out of Alabama. And same thing here with the Jaguars at pick 25. You draft Trevor Lawrence first overall. And now you want to draft protection for Trevor Lawrence. So offensive lineman, I'm going to go with Liam Eichenberg out of Notre Dame. Now Notre Dame had one of the best offensive lines in college football this past season. And part of that, Liam Eichenberg. Liam Eichenberg, excuse me. So back to back with Steelers and Jaguars. Address needs within their offensive line. Now the Browns, the surprise of the season. I have them going with Eric Stokes, the cornerback out of Georgia. I just think the Browns, the Browns have had issues with their secondary all throughout the season. I think they draft Eric Stokes to really fill in that void with that Brown secondary. And next we have the Baltimore Ravens. And I have them going with the best player available amongst their needs. And that is Aziz. I'll, I'll learn the name eventually here. But Aziz Ojulara, the edge rusher out of Georgia. So Bulldogs go back to back here. And next we have the Saints. I think it's unknown what's going to happen with the quarterback position. Drew Brees hasn't officially announced retirement yet, but many suspect that he will retire based on his final look that he gave the Superdome at the end of the divisional round. But I think they address one of their bigger needs here. I think it's best to wait for a quarterback here, especially if Mac Jones or Kyle Trask love to be on the board, or they can even acquire one through trading or through free agency. But I have him going with a wide receiver here. I am going with St. Brown out of USC. I just think with your best receiver, Michael Thomas, only really known for catching slant passes. I think you need a deep ball receiver. And Amon Sera St. Brown, I think he fits that bill quite nicely for the Saints. Next, we have the Buccaneers at 29. I think they're going to go with a developmental pick. I think this is a sole pick just to develop. Mac Jones, the quarterback out of Alabama. Yes, I know this may seem too early, but not too early for Bruce Arians. Not too early for him to learn one year under Tom Brady because Tom Brady has a two-year deal with the Buccaneers. So I would anticipate that Tom Brady will stick around for 2021 unless the Buccaneers win the Super Bowl, which I think if they do, then I think Tom Brady might want to go out on top. But if not, Mac Jones, I think that is a smart pick for the Buccaneers. Let him learn to Tom Brady for one season, then start Mac Jones in 2022. Next, we have the Buffalo Bills. And I have them with Nick Bolton, the linebacker out of Missouri. The Bills, it's kind of hard to find some flaws within that Bills defense or the Bills in general. But I just think with them needing a linebacker, I think they address one of their bigger needs. Because I think with a draft, kind of like this one, where there's going to be no NFL combine, 
And the only workouts that the scouts are going to see are at the prospect universities. I think that most teams are just going to try to address their bigger needs, kind of like last season where a lot of a lot of teams they just drafted who they thought was the best player available or they or the best player available to, to address their needs. I think the Bills I think it's going to be quite similar. Now next the Green Bay Packers at 31 and the Packers they're going to do something they should have done last season, draft a wide receiver in the first round. I have going with Kadarius Tony out of Florida. They drafted Jordan Love in the first round last year, which I think it was worth it because you can develop him and have him learn Aaron Rodgers. But the Packers can't make the same mistake twice. Draft a wide receiver, compliment Devontae Adams and Kadarius Toney. He's got speed, and that is what a lot of these teams are going to want. That is what quarterbacks enjoy. They like the receivers that are fast and have speed, and that's what Kadarius Tony has. And finally, 32 with the Chiefs. And I have them going with Jalen Mayfield, the offensive tackle out of Michigan. Because I think the Chiefs, it's really hard to say what kind of needs the Chiefs have, because the Chiefs are just that good. But I think they just want to build up on their offensive line Bill Protection for Patrick Mahomes. So that is my first NFL mock draft of the season. Comment your thoughts down below. Like, share, and subscribe. And I will talk to you next time.